What's up YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. Let's do another video on the Willet Solar Series. Uh, today we're going to look at a kind of your dorm refrigerator, mini refrigerator. Um, we're going to test this. We're going to start moving into alternating current loads. So things that you can power with your normal household power. And in order to do that we obviously have to use an inverter and so we are going to have to use a charge controller we're not going to be able to go you know straight into the inverter because we've already done a couple videos on that it's not a good idea so we are going to have to use a battery so I, I thought about how we could do this without kind of compromising the integrity of the test because obviously if you've got a battery then you're not really testing will it solar you're testing will it battery um, at that point so the, what I came up with was I'm going to try to run this for an hour. If I can run this for an hour off of a little tiny battery like that, then obviously the solar was, was doing most of the legwork. So today we've got this hooked up, um, kind of our normal setup that you guys have seen multiple times. We've got our voltmeter and amp meter here, and everything's normal. The only thing that's not normal, I want you to show you what I've got going on here is I've got a temperature gauge uh, connected to this battery. That's the only thing that the battery is doing, as you can see. The battery's not doing anything else. Um, and there's a probe that's snaking in inside. And it, this is reading in Celsius. Hopefully this will show up on the video. But right now it says 32.9 and uh, 32.9 degrees Celsius, which is fairly hot. So we're going to go ahead and turn this thing on. Um, and we'll wait until the uh, sun comes out from behind this cloud right now. And then, like I said, I'm going to let this thing run for an hour to make sure that it is going to run. This charge controller I have in here has low voltage disconnect, so I will know it will disconnect the battery power, or it'll disconnect the load completely if the battery gets too low, below like 11 something volts which means that the solar panel is not keeping up with the power and we will have failed our test. So anyway, let's, without further ado, let's go ahead and turn this on. And right as I said that, the sun goes behind a cloud again. I'm going to wait until the sun comes out from behind this cloud and then we're going to go ahead and turn the inverter on and get this test started. I guess while we're waiting for this, um, the sun to come out from behind the cloud, this uh, refrigerator draws right at an amp, just a little bit over an amp of AC power, which means it's about 120, 130 watts that it takes, which means on 12 volt, it's gonna take 10 amps. So theoretically, this, this panel, this is a 100 watt panel, this cannot produce 10 amps. So, the math doesn't work in, in our favor here, but we do have this battery in play, and so we will see if we can at least run this thing for an hour on a 100 watt solar panel, I'll be, I'll be happy. And we wanna make sure that we get it down to a good operating temperature. And that will, at that point, this 100 watt panel, it may actually be able to power this thing because the, the uh, refrigerator is gonna cycle on and off. It's not gonna run 100% of the time. So. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. All right, so the inverter's on, no problems, no alarms or anything like that. And it is pulling, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but it's pulling seven tenths, six tenths of an amp of current. So let's see what happens when we plug in this refrigerator. Okay, I can't get it to work with the smaller inverter, so I pulled out this bigger uh, inverter just to see, just to make sure that we were uh, working with a, a good quality inverter to see if this will work. I'm going to put the camera down and show you what it's doing when I try to turn it on.
So as you can see, it's spiking up to 29 amps, which is way too much for the charge controller to handle. The charge controller is only a, only a 20 amp charge controller, so I think that's our limiting factor at this point. So anyway, in conclusion, I had good intentions for this video. I really thought that this was going to work, but it doesn't. So the point of this uh, video series is to figure out, will it solar? And in this case, no, it will not. Um, and the reason I'm saying that is because you need, probably need a 40 amp charge controller, um, which is, a, is huge and, and expensive just to run a tiny little device like this. Even though it only draws one amp continuously um, while, it's, while it's operating, it draws a ton of power to, to power it up. Um, it looks like up to 30 amps according to the uh, the amp meter and that's just way too much power for a small modest solar panel system like we're working with to handle so, so anyway thanks for watching guys as always and stay tuned for the next episode